Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So this week I'm going to show you how to put choices into your Undertale game. And in order to do that, we need to look at what a turn looks like in an Undertale battle. So we start off in the menu. We've got one of four choices. And if we choose Act, Item or Mercy, it will lead us to a sub-menu with more choices. So if we choose Act, we might have the ability to complement the enemy. If we choose Item, we might be able to eat a cake to restore hit points. And if we choose Mercy, we can choose Flee or Spare. Now, once we've chosen one of those actions, we'll have a text box that describes that action. If we eat the cake, it'll say something like, you ate a cake and restored hit points. Or if we chose to compliment Scratch, then it might say, you told Scratch that he has lovely eyes. Then after that, the enemy has the opportunity to talk. Now, if you ate a cake, the enemy might not say anything about that. But if you complimented them, they might say something like, ah, oh, flattery will get you nowhere. They'll respond to your action. Then, of course, the enemy will send an attack against you and you have to evade that attack. And then there is another phase before we go back to the menu. And I won't tell you what it is. I'm going to leave it a mystery. Um, we're going to cover that in a future tutorial. If you think you know what it is, feel free to leave your guesses in the comments. Now, what we're going to focus on this session is primarily here and here. We want the text boxes to describe the different actions that you want to perform and we want the enemy to respond differently depending on what choices you make. So without any further ado, let's get to the code. So first we need to go to our enemy sprite and then look for when I receive end player's turn. We currently have this set mode to end of turn. We need to get rid of that because it's going to mess up the code that we're about to do. Now, the reason for that is we're going to use our mode variable to keep track of what choice we've just made. And we're going to make special dialogues here that only happen when we make specific choices. We haven't programmed in act or item yet, but we can choose to fight and we can also choose to show mercy. And if we do, we have two choices. We have spare and we have flee. So let's create some my blocks that will hold the special dialogue that happens when we specifically spare or flee. Let's go to my blocks, click on make a block. We'll call the first one spare. We'll drag this just here. And then we'll create another my block called flee. And we'll drag that specifically there. Now make sure you've got some space underneath spare and flee. And before we put any code here or here, we need to make sure we update the code in our box and also our heart. Let's do the box first. So we did have this if mode equals end of turn switch costume to evade. We're not using the end of turn as a mode anymore. So we need to get rid of this. And we do have this handy bit of code here that says broadcast go to box. And so what we should just be able to do is have a when I receive part go to box switch costume to evade. And that will make sure that our box is set to the right costume. Next, go to your heart sprite and have a look for define mercy. Now, if we look for if key Z pressed, so currently we just have broadcast end player's turn. Now, if you remember, this broadcast is the signal for the enemy to start their enemy dialogue. And we actually want something to happen first. We want, after we've made our choice, we want a text box that describes the action before we go to the enemy dialogue. So let's change this broadcast to something new. We'll call this new message text. And before the broadcast, we need to update the mode with the choice that we made. Now we have a variable called submenu button selected. And when we're in the mercy menu, you'll notice that when we're on spare, it's set to zero. And when it's on flee, it's set to one. So if we take our submenu button selected variable and add one to it, we can actually retrieve the correct item from this list. So get out a set mode, make sure it goes above the broadcast. Then we need our item one of mercy submenu. We need a plus operator. 
and we need our submenu button selected variable. And that should pull the correct word from our list. So let's give that a test, shall we? So in the Mercy menu, if I select Spare, our mode changes to Spare. Excellent. And if I select Flee, the mode changes to Flee. Very good. Now we need to make sure that something happens once we broadcast text. So head to your text sprite. Then we just need a when I receive text. And now every time you want there to be a description in the text box for an action, you just need to make a my block and put it here. And you don't need to provide a description for every action. I'm going to make one for flee, but I'm not going to make one for spare. So let's go to my blocks and click on make a block. We'll call this one flee, press OK. Move your define flee over there and make sure there's a flee here. Now, when we program in act and item, we're going to be able to put in new my blocks for all of the options and choices that those give us. But for now, we need to make sure that we erase the text at the end. And after that, we need to make sure that we also broadcast end player's turn to make sure that we go back to the enemy sprite who will then do their dialogue. Now, underneath define flee, we need to make sure that we have if mode equals flee. And this is what you'll need for each of these defines. We need to make sure that the mode is set to the correct choice. Let's get a few of our right line blocks out. If you want to test these as you're writing them to make sure they fit in the box, just drag them somewhere and click them. And that looks pretty good. I like how that looks. At the end, also make sure that you have a wait until any key pressed. If you want a second page of text after this one, you just need to make sure that you broadcast erase text. And then you can just put some more right blocks underneath it. And make sure that you have another wait until at the end of that. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this writing, so let's give it a test, shall we? So when I select flee, we should get, yes, we do. Now, the heart's still there, so we're gonna need to fix that. But the text has appeared, so that's good. And it's waiting for me to press a button, that's good as well. Excellent, the second page is working. And then after this, yeah, we should have the opportunity for the enemy to talk to us. Let's make sure the heart is hidden when the text appears, shall we? And thankfully, we already have a nice broadcast, broadcast text. So all we need to do is look for our when I receive go to box. And let's just nearby put when I receive text hide. And then we just need to make sure that when I receive heart go to box, we have a show. Let's do a quick test to make sure it's working. We select Lee. Excellent, the heart is hidden. But as soon as the enemy starts talking, the heart appears again. Perfect. Now we need to go to the enemy sprite and we're going to finish off the code here to make sure the enemy dialogue is working correctly. Just like we did with the text, we need to make sure that we have an if mode equals. I'm going to put some dialogue under define flee. Okay, I've put my dialogue in here. I've also included some weights and some changing costumes to give my scratch enemy some more emotions. Let's give it a test and see how it looks. So when we select flee, first we get our description. Good. And then, excellent. Now, watch what happens next. That wasn't in my original dialogue. So where's this dialogue coming from? Well, what's happened 
is that after this dialog finished, it continued on through the other dialogues and started running dialog one. So we need a way to stop this from happening. Underneath when I receive end player's turn is our master list of our different dialogues. Now some of them are specific, uh, like spare and flee. They only happen after you've made a certain choice. What will we do with dialogue one and two? We can make those dialogues generic. If no specific choice has been chosen, no other dialogue has triggered yet, we can trigger from this list of dialogues here. So to do that, we need to put an if statement around them. And what we'll do is we'll go to operators and pull out a not mode equal to and we'll call this mode dialog ended. So if the mode is dialog ended, it's not going to run any of the dialogues inside the if, which means all we need to do is set the mode the dialog ended at the end of our define flee, just like that. Now, fleeing itself is kind of pointless in this Undertale battle because there's no game outside of it you can run away to. Um, so you could, if you wanted, put in one of your game endings. If you want your Undertale battle to have multiple endings, maybe this is one of the endings, like a joke ending, like you escape, you just run away and the game is over. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, after this text has played, I'm going to remove the option of ever running away again, kind of similar to how Asgore removes the option for you to use mercy in one of his fights. Now with the way we've set up the code, this is actually really easy because our option to flee is controlled by the list mercy submenu. So if we just delete this from the list, we won't be able to do it again. So if I just go delete and we'll choose two, item number two is flee from the Mercy submenu. Once we flee the first time, we shouldn't be able to flee anymore. Okay, let's give it a test, shall we? So I'm gonna select flee and we have that come up and that's all good. Now we've got some dialogue from the enemy. Now watch carefully on the list here. Now the flee option is gone. And now that I've survived that attack wave, let's see what when I select mercy, what we see. We only have the option to spare now. Now this of course is really useful when we make items because items most of the time, once you use them, you can't use them again. But this is also true for act. Maybe if you do something the first time and it fails, you should take away the option so the player can't do it again. Or if they do something and now it's done and they shouldn't be able to do it more than once, again, you can take it away. You can also add items into the list if you do something that opens up new options as well. Now let's put some code underneath define spare. So when you spare an enemy in Undertale, you're actually trying to end the battle peacefully, but it doesn't work straight away. You actually have to build up to it. You have to build up friendship with the monster first. So the first thing that we need to do is put in an if then else, and we're going to make a new variable. We're going to call this variable friendship. And we're going to make this variable for this sprite only, then press okay. Then we need a more than operator. And if our friendship is over a certain amount, then we will successfully end the battle peacefully and get the pacifist ending. So this broadcast doesn't do anything yet, but we will program that later. Now, this is the dialogue that will show every single time we choose to spare the enemy. And that could get kind of annoyingly repetitive. So let's program in a way to be able to change the dialogue each time we spare. We need to create a new variable. We need to call this variable spare counter, because this is going to count the number of times we have chosen the option to spare. Make sure that you've selected for this sprite only, press OK. Let's make sure we change spare counter by one each time we select the spare choice, put that right here. 
And then we can put an if around this enemy speech bubble. If spare counter equals one. So this will only happen after the first time we choose the spare choice. We've also got to make sure that we set the mode to dialogue ended. And it's very important you spell this correctly, otherwise it will start running your generic dialogues like dialogue one and two when you don't want them to run. Um, and then you can copy this whole thing and make a new bit of dialogue that will trigger the second time you select the spare. Now you can keep going with this if you want, and you can also skip steps if you want. You could have uh, the enemy say nothing specific um, for spare counters three, four, but then on five, uh, they say something like, um, are you still trying to spare me? And remember, on these turns that we don't have a specific dialogue, um, it will choose one of the generic ones instead. Okay, so now we need to do something very similar to what we did with the spare counter and implement that with dialogue one and two. Because you'll notice they're still counting the turns, which means that you can actually miss out. Um, because once we've gone past turn one, this will never play again. And if you chose a specific dialogue like flee or spare on turn one, then you've lost this bit of dialogue forever, which is maybe fine if that's the way you want it to run. But we have a very simple way um, of making sure that all the dialogue is not lost. So we're going to make a new variable. We're going to call this dialogue counter. Make sure that you've clicked for this sprite only. It's going to work exactly the same as spare counter. So we need to get rid of this turn and that turn from our generic dialogues. Get rid of those and instead put in dialogue counter there and there. That's good. And then what we need to do is make sure that we change dialogue counter right here. Change it by one. Now, at the beginning of the game, we have a bunch of new variables that we need to make sure are set to zero. So we need to set dialogue counter to zero. We need to set friendship to zero. We need to set spare counter to zero. Make sure you've got all three of these. And that, guys, is about everything that you need for this week. Subscribe and ring the bell to see the next episode. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next or if you need any help. And aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.